most fits to meet all the criteria. Screw all that. Just say, hey, Mr. Curia. The sass, the class, and all this ass. Mr. Kier Chanel Davenport, she's back. Well, looky, looky. I see Mama Ruth's budget's got bigger. Kiri is a power hitter in this competition. But well, where did she get that big old booty from? You gon' you gon' slap it today. Bam. Slap it today. Miss Ass Almighty, copyright it. <laughs> the queen that nobody saw coming. On season 11, I was a force to be reckoned with. Well, mother did say, may the best woman win. I'm Jiggly Caliente from season four, the best season ever. Ah! May I call you Jiggly? Of course, mama, everything's your goal. <laughs> Season four was an amazing opportunity, but it was very emotional. There was a lot of insecurities that I didn't realize I was projecting. I mean, you're Jiggly Caliente. Embrace the Jiggly. I am. <laughs> Bitch, you look sick. And I'm coming full force. Get ready. I'm backpack, backpack, back again. Oh. Bitch, you like a pop cell Hey everyone, it's Jan from season 12 of RuPaul's Drag Race. Did you miss me? You're a feast. You bring this polish that really should be something to be proud of. I wanna rule the world. On my season, through my eagerness to win this competition, I came off completely unhinged. At an 11 the entire time. Jan, tastic! All right, you're coming off very intense right now. I think last time, I needed to prove to myself that I had everything that it took to be a winner. But now I know that. You saw see home girl is back, and she's sweeter than before. <laughs> Baby, y'all better watch out, because Miss Roz is back. Come on through, bitch. <laughs> Got more legs than a bucket of chicken. Two of them. Two of them. <laughs> I see Diana Ross, I see Lola Falana. Let me tell you something. Raja is a bad bitch, okay? But season 11, Raja, she was just a bitch. Don't try me right now. I'm not gagging. She's taking up enough mirror space. Uh -huh. This time, yeah, ma'am, I'm coming for that $100,000. Bitch, the brakes has been cut, and I'm going full throttle, bitch. Let's go. Ah! Feeling froggy. Oh, what are you wearing? It's Ginger Minge from the top three of season seven to the bottom four of All Stars 2. That's right, I'm versatile. Where in England are you from, Adele? My house. <laughs> she can give you comedy and glamour and acting and singing. I mean, she's a quadruple threat. On season seven, I was the OG big girl that made it to the finale. That's right. But on All Stars 2, my fate was in the hand of a cavalcade of other crossdressers. So the queen that I'm sending home, that's Ginger. Which one of you bitches gave me warts? Oh! I hope you like a doggy style. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm Jara Sofia, Puerto Rico's Oprah Winfrey. I'm just kidding. Ah! That body is near perfection. Escándalo. Lo recanje mover. Oh, oh, almost burned my ass. Oh, my God. That bitch was crazy. On season three, I got to top four. Gucci! Olé! I gotta be, I gotta be here, I gotta be here. <laughs> and on all sides, I think I did really well, but I wanted to show more. Season 11, I came for the lunch. All Star 6, I'm coming for the dinner. Look up, bitch, I am your winner. Oh, <laughs> Y'all know who it is. It's Bitch Sip with the Good Milk from season 11. Huh, you want some? <laughs> I'm gonna diet. I love me some silky nutmeg ganache. There's a magic to silky that you can't deny. Can I get your phone number? <laughs> When I watch season 11, I still love everything about me. <laughs> if I would have lived things for my mother life today, bitch, I was mother ready. But now that I get this second chance, I need to focus on me and my drag. I have a box for delivery, but I heard you only accept them in the rear. 
I'm Pandora Box, and I'm from RuPaul's Drag Race Season 2 and All Stars 1. I can't believe that bitch went into my purse and took that wig. She is a fantastic comedian. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. <laughs> I was Miss Congeniality of season two, and I was not Miss Congeniality of All Stars. Why do you think the universe has paired you two together? I'm glutton for punishment. Oh, dear. If I was by myself, I would have won. I need another shot because I want to win it all. Off to the races. Girl, is that? Yes! Girl, it's for Lala Lala. Another level bit for Lala Lala. Scarlett Envy back again, and I couldn't be more excited. <laughs> all Stars wants me, and the feeling is mutual. Scarlett is a leading lady. Oh, 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 oh. New phone. Who did? Not so. Best. My journey on season 11 was unquestionably cut short. Who should go home tonight? Scarlet Envy. Scarlet? Scarlet, Scarlet. All of those bitches said my name on the runway. Hi, girls. Hi. 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 Wow, it's good I am here to show the world they were wrong and win 100,000 doll hairs. Representing Panama, it's Serena Cha Cha. Ole! Okay. Hey, Chacharinas, it's Mother Hair, Serena Cha Cha. That's right, the wig stress is back. You are a young and talented queen with so much more to show the world. I can see your seafood platter. Season five, I was so young, I'm so new to drag. You only auditioned for this thing once, being 21 and getting right away once. That season had some of the strongest queens, period. I mean, titan queens, I mean like the best of the best, and I wasn't ready for that. But now, I'm ready, oh my god, I'm so ready. <laughs> Girl, you got female. Did somebody say fish? I haven't eaten all day. Since season two, so much has happened to me, and I feel like it's time for me to reintroduce myself. I am Kylie Sony Love. You can call me Kylie. All my friends do. Ooh. Georgia. The quickest way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Ride that cannon. Yeah, that hits the spot. Season two was a great experience for me. I believed in my talent then and my potential, but I knew that was not my moment. Oh, Finally! Hey! Leave that anywhere. Move on in. And I have been dreaming about the second chance forever. You know that I'm f***ed up, right? I am the lip sync assassin of season six, and I am Trinity K. Bonet. I love Trinity's creativity. Every little detail, just gorgeous. You give me Naomi Campbell down. Stop flushing that toilet so much, you gonna run my damn light bill up. <laughs> When season six, I thought I had an idea of what RuPaul's Drag Race was, but I had no clue. Trudy, I don't know why your back is turned. You have to play to the camera. The stage plays and the, the music, like, it was just a lot. Sorry if I suck, I suck. You freaked yourself out. I have never been critiqued, and it made me feel small. I'm trying to drag, pun intended, yourself out, because when I see you lip sync, I see it there. It's there. Exactly. I had it all then. I just didn't believe in myself like everybody else did, and now you can't tell me nothing. That's the advantage of being an all-star, because you get to change the narrative. This is redemption time. <laughs> Eureka, you found it. Work, man. <laughs> again, and again, and again. Well, maybe third time you charm, hell. Listen, girl, the mama is back. <laughs> Got them all-star lips, bitch. Hey! <laughs> I come to you from East Tennessee. She gives us glamorous looks with a sense of humor. My goodness, I want to look like that when I go home to my husband tonight. I'm already saving y'all. <laughs> Season nine, I popped the knee. Season 10, I didn't win, you see, but all star six, that crowns for me. Second 
chances are paramount. So rise, my queens. Rise! Like a phoenix rising from the mother tucking ashes. Ah! It's a brand rude day. A brand rude game. Well, well, well. Did somebody order glow up? <laughs> the crown will be mine. The body is back. <laughs> the world needs a little more cha-cha. <laughs> this time, I'm stepping outside the box. It's a pun, get it? <laughs> the world wants me back. And the feeling is still mutual. Are you ready to feel the fantasy Again? It's a plan to Every queen deserves a second chance. Or even a third. <laughs> Get ready to see Drag Race in a brand new light. My girls are ready for their moment in the sun. You ready? to rise and shine because the sun never sets on and off. Twerking is still a, a blessing. <laughs> Children are watching. Twerking is still a blessing, baby. It would never go out. Actually, I think the tush got a little bigger from the, from the quarantine eating. I never thought that twerking is a blessing will become a moment, but twerking is a blessing. She twerked her way to the top. Body of a goddess, face for Aphrodite. She's still that bitch, Miss Ass Almighty. A kiss now, Davenport is back. Where is the body? From season 11, she's on All Star 6. <laughs> My life after Drag Race changed because girl, I was no longer working a nine to five, if I mean. <laughs> People knew who I was outside of the pageant scene and bitch, I had a little money in my pocket. I got to start traveling more. I, I actually got to see the world. The world got to see me. The world fell in love with me as I fell in love with it. Thank you, Drag Race. Listen, I would say my drag has left pageantry where it was and we are now playing with fashions, baby. Uh, hello, do you see it? Futuristic rooster in the house. <laughs> you know, so much has happened in the world, so it does feel like 11 was a very, very long time ago. But, you know, this quarantine allowed me to look inside of who I was, you know, get myself together. And guess what? Bitch, I am ready. I'm back. Honey, my most, I'm, uh, honey, I'm most remember. That, first of all, <laughs> getting tongue tied is what I'm most remembered by. No more caftans. Burn the caftans. I still have my caftan, by the way. <music> Mentally, I am so ready. The first time around, I think that's what screwed me up the most. I was not mentally prepared to be on Drag Race. I wasn't, but this time around, I know what I'm getting myself into. I know what I want to look like. I know what's ahead of me without knowing what's ahead of me, I guess. But I'm ready to take the balls by the horn or by the drag queen or whoever I need to take. <laughs> and I'm ready to ride this roller coaster, baby. I, I de they better. The fans better see me as a front runner. Listen, if I could do all that with Drag on a Dime season 11, just imagine what your girl can do with a little cornish in her pocket. I'm always trying to outdo myself, always. Of course, it's a second chance being that I'm back on the show, but for me, I feel like there's a new Akira coming into All Star 6. It's no longer the same girl, so that girl actually is put away in a closet. She she's did what she needed to do. The pageant Akira did exactly what she needed to do. She left her mark and she left the door just cracked for this new girl to tip right on in. This time around, I don't think I want to prove anything. I just want the world to see me for who I really am. I'm the good girlfriend that everybody's gonna fall in love with if they just get a chance to fall in love with me. This time around, I'm doing everything in my power not to be invisible. 
And it's so funny because I was the underdog and the front runner at the same time. So it's like, you know, two balls and chains. This time I'm tying those bitches together. We're gonna rope them like a jump rope and bitch, we are going all in. <laughs> so the whole process of the choosing lipsticks, we all know we're getting ourselves into. We've saw this before over and over again. If there comes a time that I have to pull one of my girl's lipsticks, it's not gonna make anything change as far as on the outside of those four walls. Those sugar walls, the pink walls, the rue walls. When you get a lot of girls in one room, the cadence definitely comes out. Let a girl lose a time or two. You'll see them colors. Oh, baby, the personalities. Listen, can we get two seasons of All Star 6? Cause bitch, it's some stories to be told. Of course I'm going to win. Listen, it's okay to toot yourself on the back sometime or toot your own horn and pat yourself on the back. I'm doing both. I came to kill, steal, and destroy and take home a crown. Winning is a blessing, while twerking is too. <laughs> okay, so I'm sure you guys are all at home watching. And if you can see what I look like right now, it's self-explanatory why I should be in the Drag Race Hall of Fame. You saw my talent. You saw my work ethic. You see me here, so you see my determination. What more do you need to ask for, baby? You could get a frame now and put it around me. Trust me, she's ready. You know, I have plenty of crowns, but I don't have that one yet. So girl, listen, it won't go with this, but I'll take this bitch off and we can swap it. When I was drawing on myself, I drew a penis on my chest. A production person was like hiding in the corner, was like, Eureka. You have to scratch that out. You cannot have a penis on your chest. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Technicalities, girl, you know, honey, testicle difficulties, my bad. Literally testicle difficulties. Hey kids, Eureka O'Hara is back, honey. Y'all know me from season nine, season 10, and now All Star 6. <laughs> These girls better be ready. <laughs> My first flight ever was to Hollywood for RuPaul's Drag Race season nine. And ever since, I mean, I have flown many a times. I'm no longer afraid on the airplane. Sometimes I'm even in first class, girl. <laughs> it's changed my entire life. It gave me success. And now I'm like able to do drag on, a, on the level that I always dreamed to do it. Eureka's drag has evolved from pachyderm to full on elephant queen realness. Like now I'm at the level that I always wanted to be. I'm one of the girls that I used to aspire to be. Like a big girl icon, the glamor, the high end drag, like the closet that I have now is literally like what I used to like tear up and dream about having when I was a baby queen. 2021 Eureka's brand is high glam, fabulous, really self-proclaimed big mama, elephant queen. I'm just here to help change the world. Honestly, I think I'm most remembered for injuring myself on season nine, probably, <laughs> and then being the comeback queen that made it to the top four, which was incredible. I think I'm also remembered for my mouth. <laughs> girl, she got a mouth from the South, honey, the round mound of sound, girl, you better watch out. Apparently I talk a lot. I mean, I've never heard that, but like, you know, a few people have those opinions. Girl, but I might be too much, but hashtag mama said it, I'm everything. Girl, you know, season 10, I almost won, you know, and I've always been a runner up. I feel like I've always been the bridesmaid and I came back to All Star 6 to finally get my mother groom and be the bride. So mama, the rest of the girls can be the bridesmaids this wedding, because I'm here to be the wedding crasher and the bride. I think this is kind of my third chance. I mean, for me, I feel like it's my second chance. You know what I mean? Because season nine, I didn't have an option. I wasn't eliminated. I was, you know, sent home because of an injury and it was something I couldn't control. And it took a while for me to realize that me leaving season nine wasn't my fault. I blamed my body. I felt bad for myself. And that's why I worked so hard to do well in season 10. And I had so much pressure on myself coming back to season 10 because I was the comeback girl. I was the returning queen. And season six, I don't feel that pressure. Girl, the only thing that makes me nervous about All Stars is... 
You know, I think the only thing truly that I'm nervous about going into All Stars is just resubmitting myself to that judgment with the fans, with my fellow sisters and competitors. It's just that nervousness, you know, maybe that little bit of insecurity of like, will people love me? Will they finally, you know, get who I am fully? So, you know, that's where my nerve set is like, will people like me? But at the same time, it's like, it took me this long to finally love myself. Bitch, I ain't gonna let y'all f that up. I love to say, can I even say on the show? I'm assuming. They're gonna have it bleep to the bleep, 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 bleep. They're gonna be like, girl, Eureka's talking like Candy Muse. <laughs> Without the lisp. We can understand you. Oh, you can understand me. See, hello. <laughs> Going into All Stars knowing that I'm gonna have to pull lipsticks and be the judge. I don't wanna take anything away from anybody. I have a feeling it's gonna be really hard for me choosing the lipsticks to send girls home. Oh my God, is there gonna be drama in All Star 6? Absolutely. You got a room full of queens that want the crown. You also have returning queens that are trying to prove something. Oh, there's gonna be drama for sure. Well, I mean, you know, I'm such a mild personality, you know I'm not gonna be dramatic. <laughs> I'll save the drama for my wardrobe and my makeup. Honey, Eureka deserves me in the Drag Race Hall of Fame because she's shown y'all time and time again that she gets back up and she slays. Every time I fall, every time I trip, I get up and I work 10 times harder. When I get knocked down, I get up again. <laughs> get me down. So put me in the Hall of Fame, mama, because I've already shown y'all that Eureka's the one. Honey, the one, the two, the three, the four. In a size 22, okay? <laughs> the only thing missing in my life right now is a big old piece of jewelry shaped in a bowl crown, honey, with some rhinestones on the front that you know I'm probably gonna get soldered. Your it will haunt me until the day I die, but in the best way possible. For eggs, 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 all I want is eggs. Please just stop bringing me eggs. That's all I ask. I get it everywhere. Everybody, everywhere I go is like, I brought you a carton of eggs. What am I supposed to do with that? It doesn't travel well. I don't have room in my carry-on. Well, hey everybody, it's Ginger Minge from season seven and All Stars 2, and I am back, 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 back again. It's hard to remember a time before Drag Race because this is like it's year eight for me. I started this almost a decade ago and it's been kind of all consuming um, every single day in every single facet of my life. Well, I think it's the perfect time for me to kind of come back and show the world how much I've grown. I mean, not only this way, cause I have grown a lot that way. Grown a lot? I have grown a lot that way. I'm growing right now, girl. If I had to sum up the Ginger Minj brand, I don't know that I would be able to do that because I have, I, I, I've always, Growing up with the philosophy of you throw everything up against the wall and you see what sticks. And I'm a very sticky girl. So I, I would call myself a jack of all trades. When I walked into season seven, I put all of my emphasis into performance. So I didn't really know a whole lot about fashion. I didn't know a whole lot about makeup. I was just there to dance around, sing some songs and have a good time. And through Drag Race and from traveling the world afterwards, I've learned that that the fashion aspect is just as important. So I'm really excited to show the world that not only do I know more about fashion, but I'm excited about it. It really excites me now and I can't wait to go and show everybody my glow up. <laughs> So season seven was really great for me. I had a lot of really wonderful moments that people remember, but All Stars 2, the one thing that sticks out to everybody in the whole wide world is that horrible outfit that I got sent home wearing. I knew it was bad. I knew it was bad, but I threw a little glitter on it and I went out there like the trooper that I am. So I went from the top three of season seven to the bottom four of All Stars 2. And it was, I, gosh, I, I wanna say that it was knocking me off of a pedestal, but I didn't even have time to sit on that pedestal and kind of absorb everything that comes along with that. But now having half a decade <laughs> between my last appearance and this appearance, I know who I am. I know exactly what I have to offer, and I also know that there's people who really are excited about that. Other than me, and other than my mama, she's very excited. Look, a lot of people I'm sure are sitting there going, why is this bitch coming back again? 
a third time. <laughs> She's already had her chance at All Stars. And I have to say, no, I didn't. I had no chance on All Stars 2. I did it because I felt like I had to at that time. Now I'm doing it because I want to and because I know that I'm ready to win. This season I'm so excited to show the world that I'm all of the things that they loved about me, but I've grown past the things that they didn't like. Everybody wants to be my best friend now. <laughs> now everybody knows I love an acting challenge, I love a singing challenge. The challenges were never my issue. I enjoy the challenges, but I'm very excited to do the runways this year because I'm just excited about what I have. I'm excited to show the world, oh yeah, the Glamour Toad is now a Froganista. Hashtag Froganista. <laughs> the secret to doing well in Drag Race is just to trust yourself. You're the only one who knows what makes you tick. You're the only one that knows what makes you feel pretty. And if you can just kind of grab that and run with it, I think you'll be okay. I don't know why there's always drama surrounding these lipsticks. Like, you know it's gonna happen. You signed up for Survivor, okay? Now, you, you know that you're either gonna pick one or be picked. And it's the survival of the fattest. Fittest. The fittest. I do not think anybody is ready for this season. This season, and I know that everybody sits there and says that every year, Michelle Visage. Everybody says, this season, oh, this is the new standard. This is everything. This one actually is. So I don't think anybody's ready for this. I think that I should be in the Drag Race Hall of Fame because I've proven myself to be an international superstar. I've done all of these things without a crown. So just imagine what I could do with one. Well, not to mention, I, my picture's gonna look real pretty in that Hall of Fame. I just hope they put it low enough that I can actually see it. I'm only five foot three, people don't understand that. Period, on point, print it. Maybe retract it later, I don't know. <laughs> I am the villain of the season confirmed. I can't wait for everyone to see a different side of me. I'm a Gemini, so get ready. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Jan from RuPaul's Drag Race season 12, and I'm not gonna play it safe this time. Life before the show was fun. I was doing like five shows a week in New York City. It was bus club, another club. And then when season 12 aired, I was doing one gig a week in my living room. So it was so much fun to experience that. But we've learned, we've grown in size and in heart. So I feel good about that. My drag has definitely evolved. I'm just gonna say, take a look. Like. She looks fabulous. She, this is an all-star right here, okay? <laughs> I would definitely say that I am most remembered for my iconic verse in You Don't Know Me. No, I'm kidding. My claim to fame is definitely the face crack of the century for not winning the Madonna Rusical. You know, to have a traumatic moment like that be captured on TV, I, Love it. I feel like a lot of people are gonna be skeptical about me coming right back after my season, but I really had time to like look at myself on the show and say, okay, this is how I can improve. This is what I can do differently. And I feel fresh in those feelings. So let me go and do that. I've been safe quite a bit on the show, as we know. And I think that if I'm safe again, it will just be par for the course. I'll know how to handle it this time. Um, you know, maybe not have a moment where it becomes a viral meme, but Nothing's off the table, babe. It's all stars. Fingers crossed. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm here not just to win a challenge. That is a short-term goal. I'm here for the long-term. I wanna win the crown. I want it to be mine. Why do All Stars? I just feel like I have unfinished business. I love this show so much and I did not enjoy how I did the first time around. I watched myself and I was like, you're so much fiercer than this. So let's come back and really show everybody what it's like. This is a second chance for so many things. I feel like, you know, there's always room to grow. Personality, talent, challenges, makeup. I feel like I'm checking each box and I'm stepping it up in each level. And I've done that really quickly. And I mean, I feel like it shows. Like, look at the past. Look at the past season twelve. I, I looked. I didn't look busted, but 
I don't look like this. <laughs> I definitely am just passionate about what I do and I wanna prove to people that I belong in the room and that I belong in this competition. And I just want people to see that I know that I have the talent inside of me. I can be cool, calm, and collected and deliver that. I think that fans are gonna be shocked at the talent that is on All Star 6, truly, I really do. And that's so exciting, I can't wait for people to see it. What makes me nervous about All Stars is just like, the voting, it's tough, it's really crazy. And like, I watch it from home and I'm like, this is a different ball game. And I know that if I'm in that position, I'm gonna be so nervous to choose because it's just a heightened situation. And the voting scares me, people can just vote you out, crazy. I definitely feel like there's a lot of queens from other seasons who are a little bit older than me, have a little bit more experience, and I'm the like new girl on the block. I'm like, what do they call it? The, sp the spring chicken or something? Is that what it is? <laughs> the spring chicken. Okay, bok bok. Um, I think that, you know, that might come into consideration. I think that people might see me as a threat. I'm fresh, I'm new off the season, and I think that they might want to get rid of the girl. But honey, I'm not coming. I promise you, this is a very, very intense and dramatic season. I think I should be in the Drag Race Hall of Fame because I'm the whole package. And I feel like that is something that a lot of queens say, we've heard it before, but I really feel like I do have all of it. I, I said this last time and I still stand by it. I have the looks, I wear nails, I have really pretty makeup, I'm nice, I'm professional, I'm on time, I was actually early today. And I just know, I think I really get what the fans want and I know how I can elevate my brand. I've only been doing this for four and a half years and I've grown, I've adapted, I've adjusted in such a short amount of time. I know that I'm ready and I know that the capabilities for me and the world that I you know, can create and offer to other people is infinite. And I just want people to see that and show that to people. <laughs> what about her wonky ass? No, I'm These hoes, I can't. I'm about to kill Eureka. This is gonna be so evil, I know it. I'm gonna be the shadiest one of the season, I could see it. No, no, I'm the shadiest of the season, but I am not the villain. Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl Jiggly Caliente from season four, and I am back in the motherfucking building. Since season four, I have established myself to be an actress. And I've also came out as a trans woman. I am trans, like, I am a woman and I'm happy living my life, living my truth, and that's about it. Oh, and I got new teeth. It has been nine, I think nine or 10 years now since season four. So it's been a minute. This show has definitely changed immensely since season four. There's not that many sewing challenges, which is great. I kind of like that. Why couldn't they do that in my season? And there were more acting challenges. So yeah, I think this show has definitely changed a lot. My drag has definitely evolved since season four because in season four, I thought I was this pageant girl and didn't even realize how funny I was till I saw the show. And I was like, damn, I am kind of funny. So, <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm mostly remembered for baked potato. <laughs> I could never live it down, and it's okay, because I'm known to be the worst outfit that's ever been ever made on RuPaul's Drag Race. Wait. Till La La Ree showed up, and that kind of pissed me off, cause that was my th that was my thunder. I know why the bitch stole it. I still say mine is the worst. I grew to love me. I call you Jiggly, but there was like one year that I hated it. Okay, it was also because we were on a cruise ship for like seven days, and as soon as I would leave my room, somebody would be like, "May I call you Jiggly?" I'm like, "It's 8 a.m. You can't wait till I get breakfast in my system for you to say, "May I call you Jiggly?" Like, no. I enjoy a drag con, it's so cute a drag con, mainly when little kids are the ones that say it to you, it's like, okay, I was like, thank you, Rue. Definitely more glam than season four, because I got the money now. She can afford nice things now. I don't even need $100,000, I just need RuPaul to say, Jiggly, you're the winner. You won this bitch, this whole shebang. And I'm like, all right, cool. 
I wanted to show everybody that I got really pretty teeth now, that I've lost 50 pounds since Drag Race season four, got better clothes, and I'm wearing human hair, and all the rest of these girls are bricks. <laughs> During the pandemic, it was crazy because people were like, I just started watching Drag Race, I just started watching season four, I loved you on your season. I was like, were we watching the same season? <laughs> I look crazy on my season. But I'm glad that they like me and hopefully they get to enjoy me now even more. There's so much more to me than just the urban hot mess of season four. My humor is my armor and, and it's also like my greatest strong suit, so why not use it? Oh, I'm sure the newer girls are gonna think, oh, she ain't Oh, she hasn't done anything, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, honey, I've been booked since season four. What's motivating me to win is because this is no longer just about me. I represent so much more than just me. I'm representing the Filipino community, I'm representing the trans community. I'm representing every little brown kid watching this show that hopefully could see themselves in me. As long as they see somebody like them, I think that's really important because representation does really matter. The only thing I'm nervous about is because I haven't worn heels in a couple months. We have been in a pandemic. So I don't know if um, my feet could handle it, but I know I could tear it up. This cast is a very vocal cast. Let's put it that way. They're gonna be like, that's a loud season. That's gonna be a last. They might wanna put their volume to a five. Might not wanna put it to a 10 or a 20. Cause remember, Silky, Eureka, me, Ginger. Loud. I should be at the Drag Race Hall of Fame because he's never had a short winner. <laughs> All the winners have been like five, 10 and up. I would be the first little short one. So RuPaul needs to crown a short, brown and round girl. Well, not girl. Woman. I'd look good next to like, yeah, who's like Chad, Alaska, Trixie, Monet, Trinity, Shay. Yeah, I, I, I belong in that group. I got a call to come back to All Stars and they didn't even have to finish the question. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm there, listen. All Stars is like the ultimate. Hold on. I had a great answer. <laughs> hey, what's up? It's Kylie Sonique Love from RuPaul's Drag Race Season 2. Now I'm here on All Star 6. Season two feels like a lifetime ago for me. I feel like I've evolved more as an entertainer, but also in my personal life, I started a new journey like right after Drag Race. So like, I'm like a completely different form of, you know, what people thought I was. So this is a perfect time for me to reintroduce myself. So the fans usually know me as just Sonique, but I always like to say, no subtractions, only additions, and I'm reintroducing myself right now, and you all can call me Kylie Sonique Love. Season two, I think people usually remember me from doing flips, which is a very small part of who I am, and I, I think that people acknowledge that I was the first contestant to ever come out as being trans on the show. I think not only did it help the viewers of the show, but I think it also helped people in their own personal journeys, you know, help decide who they are, whether they are trans or not, but like, you know, at least they have had something or someone that was making that step. I am totally like mentally ready for All Stars, which is completely different than whenever I first came onto the scene. The way I'm looking at All Star 6 is not only a second chance for me to prove to myself that I'm capable of growing and learning, but it's also a second chance for the audience to get to see what they missed out on. Oh honey, 
will a crown look good on me? I mean, every girl will love some new jewelry and I think I'm ready for it. Everyone has a different mindset when they come in. Um, some are wanting to compete against others. Some have their own personal thing they're going through. Um, I forgot the question. You know what, I feel like the girls may underestimate me because I am from my earlier season. I don't show everybody what I'm capable of doing until it's necessary. If they underestimate me, I feel bad for them. I don't like to surround myself with yes people who just say yes to me all the time. I don't feel like you can grow that way. I will ask opinions, but I'll also, at the end of the day, I'll make up my own mind and I always trust my gut. When I think about All Stars, I don't really think about myself being nervous, to be honest. I just feel excited. I don't feel nervous. I mean, yeah, people do normally see me as being really calm and everything like that, but I do have a playful side. There are people that are gonna have way bigger personalities. You know, I love that. I, I'd much rather be around a big personality than someone boring. I really think the fans are gonna love this season. I think it's an eclectic group of girls. There's a lot of girls who went home earlier or maybe the fans don't really know that well or maybe don't like that well. I think they're gonna be surprised. This is gonna be one, one of the best seasons ever, I promise. I mean, is that even a question? Like, I feel like I represent everything and more that Drag Race is all about. And there's no reason why, you know, I shouldn't be up there with the rest of those girls in the Hall of Fame because I think I have what it takes and I'm gonna show you that on All Star 6. Crown <laughs> it, sign me up, I'm here for it. I'm sorry, what, it, what is that called? All Stars 1? I have no recollection of that whatsoever. Was I on All Stars 1? I really don't remember. Mm. I can't picture it. Who knows? I don't, is it All Stars 6? Is that what I'm on? Hi, I'm Pandora Box, Miss Congeniality from RuPaul's Drag Race Season 2, and not Miss Congeniality from RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars 1. <laughs> My life hasn't really changed at all. I'm still a humble farmer from Alabama. No, I'm kidding. Uh, my life totally changed. I was able to become a full-time drag queen because of RuPaul's Drag Race, so that's amazing. And and still working. I mean, not like the last year, because, well, no one's working. Season two, I think, was shot in 1912. I don't really remember. I mean, I do remember that I lost. <laughs> Leaving season two, I did not feel like I was a fan favorite. I felt like, wow, I have destroyed my drag career. And so I don't remember the question. I will tell you that I adore Carol Channing and still adore her. Rest in peace, Carol. Um, but had I known then that I would have to say raspberries for a decade, I might have done something differently. Funny thing is that uh, people think that I actually won Snatch Game and I didn't. They're like, oh, I loved when you won Snatch Game. I'm like, bitch, I didn't win. I didn't win. I didn't win anything. Nothing. Except Miss Congeniality. The show is crazy now. It's just like the bar has been raised and raised and raised. And I don't know how this happens, but contestants keep getting younger. I mean, I'm only like 20 something. You know, I'm fully aware that some of these younger queens haven't even seen my season. Don't get a twist, girl. I know which one hasn't and which one has. And maybe they underestimate me. You know what I have to say? Good. You know, I don't really know the secret to doing well in Drag Race because I've never won. If they had asked me to do an All-Stars before, I might not have done it because All-Stars 1 was very traumatic. But I think that I'm ready and I'm excited and, you know, I am here to win, bitch, because I, you know what I want? Money. 
because it's a pandemic and I haven't worked for a goddamn year. So you know what I want? I want money, bitch. Honestly, going back, I'm most nervous about, I cannot be eliminated first. That's literally it. I was like, no, 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 that cannot happen. That kind of, that's my inner voice. This time I'm like, oh my God, what if I had to send a friend home? And then I would think $100,000. Bye. You know, I'm gonna say there's a lot of loud ass bitches on this season. So you know what I'm gonna probably be is like this. My resting bitch face is gonna kick in full force cause they're never gonna let me talk. They're yelling and then they're talking and they're doing all this and I'm like this to camera. I think fans are gonna love this season because all the girls are so hungry for it because we've been all in quarantine for so long and haven't been able to perform. So everybody's like, I need to perform. And some of them are gonna perform 24 hours a day, seven days a week, which is exhausting. I think that I should be in the Drag Race Hall of Fame because a bitch I've been performing since like 1849 and I have paid my dues and I'm good and I'm funny and people like me and I'm still relevant after being in Drag Race 300 years ago and, and I don't know, I'm cute. I think I've earned my spot in the Drag Race Hall of Fame. Let me reintroduce myself. My name is Raja D. O'Hara from All Star 6, bitch, okay? <laughs> I didn't get no credit for making good TV, though. See, that's the thing, you know what I mean? We have all these classic and iconic Raja moments. Why didn't I get no credit? Maybe a little bit more booty hole. You might get to see a little bit more booty hole. Maybe not my booty hole, but you know it's gonna be some booty holes happening. <laughs> What's the tea? It's your homegirl, Roger D. O'Hara, straight from season 11 of RuPaul's Drag Race, and I'm back for the All-Stars. Are you ready? <laughs> I am. <laughs> you know, life changed dramatically of course, my face was plastered across the world, so I've gotten a lot more attention, but then there was also a lot of backlash and a lot of hate that came my way, but guess what? I'm strong, I was built for it tough, so baby, I was ready for it. So I'm just ready to come back and show what I got, and you know, the glow up. It's real, okay? <laughs> baby, once I win All Star 6, now the coin is gonna be extra right, okay? Shopping spree! <laughs> <laughs> oh, attitude, attitude. I most definitely remember from season 11 from my confessionals. You're welcome, you're welcome. I was like, you know, always talking that, talking that, yeah, okay. I would happen to agree with the fans that think that I am a hell of a lip syncer. I felt like I was the lip sync assassin of my season because I sent several girls home, but my title wasn't given to me, so Hopefully this time I will be in the top so I can absolutely lip sync and give me some money on top of all of that. Ooh, baby. I'm ready. What's up? Play the track. Cue the track. Raja is still your homegirl. She's still Raja from the streets, but she's also like, she's a little bit more fun, she's a little bit more energetic. So this time, I already know what to prepare for, just who saw, have fun. This is very much my second chance, and you know, second chances do not come around often. So when you get an opportunity, you better make it count. You better make it stand for something. I'm coming with a mission, on a mission, to do the damn thing, so. I have everything that it takes. I just didn't really put it all together and make it a pot of Kool-Aid. I didn't put that little. But this time, baby, you know I'm bringing my salt, but I'm bringing my seasoning, my seasoning salt, okay? It's not just salty, I'm bringing that pepper, I'm bringing that garlic, bitch, I'm bringing all of it to make it 
chef's kiss. Baby, there is no other options. I want to win. There is, who you gonna cry on? Who is gonna be? Your homegirl, of course. This is all stars. This time it's all about me. It's uh, the only bitch in the room that matters is me. Ooh, we do have to choose lipsticks on All Stars. Ugh. I'm not saying that I'm gonna throw nobody out of the bus, but you know, if we standing at the bus stop, and here kind of bus bit, there go your bus. I ain't gonna throw you under there, but I'm gonna tell you there go your bus. Okay. <laughs> Big personalities in the room, drag queens, drama. Of course, it's happening, it's happening. I'm just gonna sit back and eat my popcorn. Hopefully it ain't me though, that's like giving a bitch too much, cause you know, I'm good for it. <laughs> the reason I am going to be in that Hall of Fame, first and foremost, that's what I'm manifesting. That's the first answer. That's the only goal coming into All Star 6 is that crown. So first and foremost, but nevertheless, we already know I have the charisma. I have the uniqueness. We know I got nerve. But this time, I'm showing you that that tea that I was serving last time is for the talent. How about that? She's the talented queen. So I am everything that RuPaul is looking for. I am 100% that bitch, okay? So what Candy Mew say? Crown it. <laughs> and that photo, it's gonna be gorgeous, okay? Beautiful, purple, shiny. Smiley, okay. I don't wear pink normally. It's one of the first times I've ever worn pink. I think I'm entering my pink era. <laughs> Hi, Scarlet Envy here from RuPaul's Drag Race season 11. And I'm back for All Star 6. like yesterday, season 11 doesn't feel like that long ago. Time flies when you're having fun, and uh, having fun is an understatement for what I've been doing. Well, my drag has definitely evolved from season 11. I'm trying new things, like wearing makeup, uh, you know, dancing on stage, you know, being a drag queen. Oh, well, you tell me. Um, what am I remembered for from season 11? Honestly, I feel like I'm remembered most for my lip sync. I don't know, maybe I won, maybe I didn't. It's been the controversy that continues to follow me. And I think that's probably what people think about when they think about my experience. It's definitely uh, changed. My The way I define myself has changed. I think that I don't take it so seriously. I think that I had a lot of stuff that I was working through on a personal level the first time around. And it's honestly a form of therapy to watch that unfold and see who that person was, what that person thought, the opinions that that person had, uh, and the growth that that person needed to go through. What was shocking was doing it in front of the world. That's a lot of pressure, but I'm happy that it went that way. You know, I learned a lot about myself. I learned things that I should do more of, things that I should do less of, <laughs> complaining less, uh, eyeliner more. I still love a mirror. That will never change. Hide your mirrors, girls. <laughs> She's back. I'm continually underestimated, uh, just kind of in general, I think. Um, it doesn't bother me. In fact, I'm gonna try to use it to my advantage. Yeah, I came here to win, of course. I think that you have to. I would be so scared about the girl who comes in and, and is ready to leave the first day, you know? Absolutely, I'm here to win. They say that we have a pretty loud cast, but I remind them that I came from season 11, so I think it's actually not as bad. <laughs> I think we're a little quieter than season 11, believe it or not. Yeah, if any season will prepare me for this cast, it was my season, yeah. Well, no one wants to pick a lipstick. Um, that's why I wear just chapstick for so many years. I'm worried because I'm like fragile and emotional and messy, so it's hard for me to not take things personally. 
but I'm gonna try to be a professional for the first time in my life. Oh girl, there will definitely be drama this season. Next question. <laughs> Is it me? Am I the drama? I don't think I'm the drama. Maybe I am. Am I the villain? I don't think I'm the villain. I think Jiggly's the villain. <laughs> Honestly, I think instead of my picture, we can just put a mirror in a frame and they'll just know that like that's my spot. But like instead of looking at me, they can always just like enjoy looking at themselves. Yeah, like that's, you know, Alaska's here and Scarlett's here, but this is just a mirror because, you know, it's Scarlett's spot in the Hall of Fame. I didn't answer your question though. I just like am designing what I'm gonna be like on the Hall of Fame. So, I deserve it, I think, because I've just really put the work in. I think I have rose to the challenge of everything that, that the judges and the fans have thrown at me. I'm tired of being underestimated, to be honest. I just need a crown, yeah. Serena Cha Cha is carnival hair, honey, beauty empire, honey. I'm like the Martha Stewart of drag, honey. I swear to God, the ideas that come out of here. <sighs> mm -hmm. Hey, Cha Serenas, it's Serena Cha Cha from season five of RuPaul's Drag Race. Back for RuPaul's Drag Race All Star Six. Life after RuPaul's Drag Race has been amazing. I mean, I started a beauty empire, Serena Cha Cha wigs, and throughout the last few years, I've really grown to become a strong contender, now available in All Star 6. So since season five of RuPaul's Drag Race, my drag really has evolved. I chose to continue to do drag, and in every queen who decides to wear my hair, I've learned the essence of every queen's uh, drag and their ideas, and that really has polished and evolved Serena Cha Cha into a complete glamazon. It feels like a thousand years ago, season five of RuPaul's Drag Race happened. I'm no longer 21, let the world know that, but I still look like it. <laughs> it was like the best college present. I graduated college, and then two days later, I got the call, I was like, oh my God! So then you show up all fueled up because you think, you know, a degree makes you, you know, a stronger queen. No, no, it's called the drag school of life. Fast forward eight years later, this is real drag now. I'm mostly remembered for having an entire episode made after myself fighting all the other queens. I'm okay with that. Listen, Latinos, it's not really fighting. It's just how we talk. You know what I mean? If you come to my house, we're like, and just we're, that's, that means we're making love, really. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, it still gets memed and there's new animations created after it. I was like, hey, listen, I'm all about it. All Stars is the, you know, latest iPhone upgrade of drag. You know what I mean? We need that sort of second opportunity for us to be seen after all the years of RuPaul's Drag Race. I mean, it's been more than 10 years now. Just to have your name on that All Stars upgrade, I think we really allowed the world to finally see what I've been doing the, the past eight years, you know? This is second chance. I mean, gosh, who doesn't want to redeem themselves, you know? But I think every move you make in drag is a second chance because you never know who's watching out there. Well, I want to prove to myself that I have everything that it takes to come and snatch this crown. Queens are always going to underestimate, I think, a pretty queen. I think that we come in with kind of a double-edged sword, you know? People might not understand what we're capable of. But, you know, we can be funny, we can dance, we can sing, we can act, we can do so many things. I think it's not expected, so it could, it could be a shocker sometimes. The motivation to win this time is to really show that when you focus yourself, you can create the power to do anything that you want. I think the most uh, nervous I am in the show is the things that I can't control because I'm a control freak, right? So like if you tell me prepare one outfit, I'm gonna bring five around it because that's just what I do. But it's really easy to get caught on the more, more, more instead of simplifying your ideas. But those are our own demons. Listen, I don't have time for drama, honey. I'm allergic to that. I don't do anything that doesn't make me money and drama doesn't make a dollar. Unless you want real theater and real television and then real film and then, then I'm really gonna give it to you. But girl, no. I mean, choosing is just easy. You pick or you don't pick, you know? I'm pretty sure the girls aren't gonna hesitate. But I would think if people would want some free hair. 
they might vote differently. <laughs> Fans don't get to necessarily have a vote. Uh, it's strictly based on the sisters and are they gonna vote because they want to keep me here because I brought a fierce package uh, and I've evolved to be a fierce queen or are they gonna vote me out because they might not know of me as much as I wish or there might be longtime friends here in this competition, you know? I'll see. I think that I'm gonna have to say that out of all the All-Stars I've seen, this is a strong cast. Everybody has something to bring to the table and everybody has either become something or they come from another season being a strong competitor. This is a fierce cast. <laughs> you know, I shall be in the Drag Race Hall of Fame because I am living proof that when you don't give up, it shows in your work. I feel more than prepared to reign, wear that crown, and take drag further in the most remote places. I mean, I'm talking Latin America, in the smallest little towns in Panama, whatever country, where people still don't even know what drag is, where children are trapped in their parents' home wanting to do what we do the most. And to be that muse that can spread that message across the world, that is why I deserve to be in the Drag Race Hall of Fame. The great woman said, when they go low, you go high. Now, another great woman said, when they go low, you beat their ass down, then pick them back up. Monique said that on Trump School, and I need to do that. Hi, it's Bit Silk with the good milk. Silky Nutmeg Ganache from Mallsport, Mississippi. And guess what? We made it again on All Star Season 6. Pat out. How you like me now? How you like them cookies? They will call you back when you do TV. Don't forget that. <laughs>my goodness my life changed so drastically after drag race there is not a glow up i just now got the coin <laughs> don't let them bitches fool you girl they be talking about oh a glow up glow up no they got a little more money and i got a little more money too and i'm trying to make a whole lot of more so i need to come on and win this all stars baby the silky brand in 2021 is to get those coins watch out for my book Watch out for my TV show. Watch out for all my good merch and my aprons. I think I've evolved since season 11 because I just wanted to elevate everything. Elevate my clothes, my makeup, my hair, my attitude towards other people because I am the star. Let's not be honest, I had all the best moments. Let's just say when I did no scrubs, I wasn't that ready. Honey, I was going through it emotionally. But baby, watch out. Hashtag Silky is coming. I am the entertainer, I am the fun girl, and that's what y'all always gonna know and love me for. So follow me if I can have a million followers like the other jank ass bitches. I think I really went back to All Stars for the fandom. I didn't realize how many people that I touched on season 11, I'm on a platform that is beyond me now. What really matters is that I get to show each and every one of you people that no matter how life goes, I'm still here and I'm still very, very successful. Let's not get it twisted now. Now, I didn't go get these high garments and pay thousands and thousands of dollars just to, you know, sit on the bench and cheer other hoes on. Let me tell you something. What I don't realize the secret to winning is kissing ass because on season 11, you got to press, impress the judges. All stars, you got to impress bitter bitches that may or may not care for you. So if you kiss ass long enough, you'll stay on. I ain't that type of girl, but I know one thing. I ain't kissing your ass. Kissing ass didn't get me here today. I did not mean to be shady. I did not mean to be shady. See, this is what happened. Y'all get me in front of these cameras and y'all y'all know I tell the truth. Will they be in some drama with me? Hell no, I ain't got time for drama this season. I don't have time for it. Let me tell you why. I don't wanna be remembered for the drama. This time, I wanna be remembered for my efforts. I should be in the Hall of Fame because no matter how many times I was kicked down, I'm always on top. I always come back stronger. 
I always come back harder. I always come back more beautiful. In the world of drag, that's what's needed. Yeah, sure. I believe there will be drama. <laughs> I'm not starting no drama. I'm too glamorous and fabulous for that. I, yeah, I don't, I don't like drama. But I do believe that there will be, there's big personalities in the air, you know? And it's, it's a drag race, so <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> hey, what's up, you guys? It's Trinity K. Bonet from RuPaul's Drag Race Season 6, and now I'm back for All Star 6. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just eight years. My life after RuPaul's Drag Race changed dramatically. I got to travel the world and eat extremely expensive foods. I met a ton of like beautiful, beautiful queens all over the world. I think that's one of my uh, most valued moments. I have worked with the likes of Miley Cyrus and Taylor Swift. I've won a VMA award. I've been on the Ellen Show. I have toured 28 cities in Canada. All of these things Drag Race have afforded me the opportunity to do. So. Hell, if I did all of that in this time, God already knows what I can do next. <laughs> I think that my drag has not changed, actually. <laughs> I've been like really content with my style, but my style has always kind of changed with time. This particular experience on All Stars, I was able to be fashion forward, but put drag into it. So I gave a little bit of drag and a little bit of me at the same time. I just spent more money that I don't have to spend. <laughs> At first, I thought me coming back to All Stars was about me and um, proving to people that I wasn't full of excuses, that I could make it all the way, that I did have what it takes, that I did listen. I have grown out of all of those things. I do feel like I have what it takes. Coming back here was bigger than me because there were so many people that believed in me and wanted me here. And I can't tell you how many messages I get about will you go on All Stars as if we could just pick up the phone and say, hey bitch, put me on, you know? <laughs> You know, it doesn't work like that. I don't think that it's my second chance. I think it's me coming here the way that I knew I should have the first time. I think I was good then. I'm better now. I'm not a competitive individual because I'm all about like sisterhood and like, because I, I'm the type of person I can evaluate everybody around me and I know your strengths. I'm never going to downplay anybody to make myself look better. If you can lip sync, you can lip sync. And I'm a cheerleader for all of my sisters. Now, now I do love a good crown. <laughs> Drag Race is a goal of many goals that I have. And I feel like, you know, if I can conquer all my goals, then go for them, no matter how hectic life is. The secret to doing well in Drag Race. <laughs> I don't think there is a secret. I think you either got it or you don't. I'm nervous about the fans and them not understanding and never seeming to remember that this is a competition. So when we have to vote or, you know, put ourselves in these situations to where this is how the game goes, not for it to be held against you. It's an added level of, of frustration because now I have to, you have to be attentive to everything around you, not only yourself, but your surrounding, you know, because you want to be fair and your integrity is constantly questioned. And I don't like my integrity question because I'm a very loyal person. You know, I'm always played by the rules in the game because it's the fairest way to play. I, I'm excited about new people learning who the TKB is. And under new management, <laughs> you know, a different head, a different attitude, a different approach. I'm still extremely sensitive. My heart is made of mashed potatoes. So I'm really mushy and very, um, you know, I'm sensitive. That's something that I feel like people should have. There's a lot of insensitive people in this world and those are the people you should be scared of. So, don't mistake my sensitivity for uh, being a punk. <laughs> yeah, of course I think I should be in the Drag Race Hall of Fame. One, I, I look like a winner. You know, I smell like one. Yeah, I can cook. 
that has nothing to do with drag, but you know, more than enough reason. I could be a bitch, you know, and I could use my loudness to hurt you. Literally, like I would, I would hurt you. Start screaming like Mortal Kombat character. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm just saying. Look at this trick. Ah! Ah! See, flexible. Hi everyone, this is me, Yara Sofia, all the way from RuPaul's Drag Race season three and All Star season one. And because every queen deserves it, taken opportunity and chance. I'm here for season six. Well, my life has changed a lot. First, I was living in Puerto Rico and I had to move. And since then, it's been like crazy, you know? I don't know how to describe my, I'm, I hate to describe myself. I hate it, I don't know what I'm, what I'm, that's the problem. I don't know what I am. Probably something today and something tomorrow. Well, I'm very flexible, eclectic, and loud. <laughs> I, no, this is my tone of voice. I'm not pretending to be loud. <laughs> well, I'm excited because we're gonna have like this new kit they're gonna be f fans of the show because my season was so long ago. Everything has changed and the trolls have multiplied, but I'm ready for the trolls. I don't care. I don't care. I don't pay attention to that, but I'm ready for the new fans that when I was in drag race, they were probably 11 years old. <laughs> well, my drag has been better because we have more options now. Back in the day, we didn't have makeup lines were racist. They didn't have all the shades. Now we have a lot. Hair, wigs, everything. So it's better because we have more options, you know? The, I think they're I'm known for because my British accent. And people say I have an accent. I'm from Mississippi. <laughs> no, I'm not. Ha <laughs> ha! The game has changed like a lot. We have done everything. Well, I wanna unprove that I'm not a crier. <laughs> well, I cry, but it's, well, it's a lot of pressure there. And the world's not porn. It's like crazy. Other queens think like I'm stupid or dumb, and I, I like it. I mean, Paris Hilton made a career, and she's a billionaire. It, she got money from her parents, but she made money. I'm nervous because I'm from season three, so it was a long time ago. And I know we have new, newer queens. Some of them have more fans, you know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of pressure and people that haven't seen like previous season, I have to like kind of start from zero. Also, it's a totally different game because it's not just impressing RuPaul. It's like this bitch has got to impress them. And normally I don't care about them, you know? It's always drama. I mean, ha what do you expect with 13 bitches on, on, on a room and worse, no porn? You know what I'm saying? We are 13 uh, queens. It's never been that much. And if it's, there were drama in the All Stars with 10, I cannot wait. You have to watch it. It's gonna be sickening. I'm just gonna mini mo. Mini mo, mine it. How is how you say it? Mini, mini, mini mo. Uh, that one. So I'm mini, mini, mini mo them because I don't, I, I don't, I don't think I, I can. I don't, I don't. It's a lot of personality in the cast, and it's a lot of big personality. I always come to win. I mean, of course, I would do the whole wall, my picture, and then the other ones behind it. Yeah, and, and I want my picture like Harry Potter. So when you pass by, I move. You know what I'm saying? Or even the eyes. Like when you move it, like, I would love that. It would be sickening. Ha <laughs> ha! Like Harry Potter, oh my God. 